over your house before you came to church tonight. I saw plenty of that on the news, didn't you? Oh, yeah. So can we praise the Lord? Amen tonight. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah for He is Lord. We have got plenty to praise Him for. Amen. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. No matter what the news headlines say in the morning, no matter what's going on, maybe even if we do end up somewhere down the road like what's going on in Ukraine, because He lives, we can face tomorrow. Let's sing it. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, oh, hallelujah. All I fear is not. Because I know.
such a blessing to our church amen and I mean that with the, not only the helping us in music and leading but uh, just uh, being here in your presence and, and, and so we love you I know that her back has been bothering her this week and uh, but I don't think that's going to stop one thing tonight 
I don't think that's going to hinder one thing tonight. And uh, would you welcome Lisa tonight as she comes to share, Lisa Bowers, as she comes to share the word with us. Amen. always an honor and a privilege to get to stand before you and share what thus saith the Lord and know that if I was contagious I wouldn't be here so you know this is just something that's just in me it's just called OLD you know we've got OCD and we got all these I'm just OLD okay so that's all it is and so I appreciate your prayers tonight and I I hate that Shirley fell on the way in but exactly what we stopped and did brother again is what I'm going to preach about tonight and talk to you about is um, simply prayer and I know Richard kids me about getting preachy, so I don't know how preachy I'll get tonight. It might just be more teachy, but that's okay. But I'm telling you, it was it has been great to be in the house of the Lord today. It's just like once I get in the presence of the Lord, I don't really care what's bothering me. You know, I just I'm just oblivious to it, and I'm just thankful that the Lord touches us when we make a point to come to His house. Can anybody else here testify to that? When we put coming to His house a priority, and we make coming in here like He says to do together in in the house of the Lord with like believers and fellowship one with another, it touches me. And I'm telling you, this morning service just I have just gleaned off of that. I just want to share that real quick. Those of you that that came down this morning. I'm just going to tell them myself, I, you know, we, we hear the scripture, oh, ye of little faith. I told Alan, I said, oh, me of little faith. I mean, you preached a good message. We need to hear those kind of ser- sermons and messages more often. But when I looked down here and saw how many people came down and you were so transparent and, and ready to call it out, let me tell you, that's when you can find victory. And just because I was up there on piano, don't, don't think I didn't have my own addictions. I told a couple of people after church, I said, um, I've got a gossip problem. We don't hear much about that anymore either. I was, I'm addicted to gossip. Now, as ministers, if you tell us something, that's considered confidential whether you tell us or not. But in my family, oh, my goodness, we just eat it up. And I'm one of the key players, you know. I call this one to see if they know more about a story than I do. And then I call that one, and it's just, I'm just addicted to that. And the Lord's helping me. He's working on it. But Alan will tell you. It's a work in progress. So I'm not there yet. <laughs> but again, th- <laughs> I knew that was coming. I just didn't expect it to be so loud. <laughs> but if you have your Bibles, please turn with me. We're going to look at just a simple scripture tonight. Again, it might be more teachy than preachy. I don't know. But turn with me in the Word of God to Matthew chapter 6. And I do covet your prayers to steal one of Charles Spurgeon's quotes that Alan uses so much. He said, No man can do me a truer kindness in this world than to pray for me. So I covet your prayers tonight, and I appreciate the prayers you've already prayed. So if you will get your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 6 and stand for the reading of God's Word. I'm going to look at this one scripture tonight. The words of Jesus, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. Matthew 6 and verse 6. And the word of God says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now we're going to look at three things here before you sit down. We're going to pray. But there's three essential features in this command that we're going to take a look at tonight about prayer. And let me tell you, we can preach about prayer till Jesus comes and we wouldn't cover it all. Amen. There is far more to cover than we'd ever get to. So we're just going to look at three things tonight about prayer is to be a set place. It's to be a secluded place and a shut place. So like I just got through saying, you can do me no greater kindness than to pray for me. So won't you stretch forth your hand and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you and we bless your name tonight. God, we give you glory and honor and praises. I thank you for your presence. And Lord, as I try to do what I feel like you've called me to do tonight, to speak your word, let your words be in my mouth. Let me flow in the anointing, God, that breaks the yoke and that makes everything different. Lord, touch every soul, every hearer tonight. God, let your word go forth, do a work in our lives. May we be changed, transformed, and convicted by your word and changed by your spirit in Jesus' name. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And amen. You may be seated. In the word of God here, these words again are the words of Jesus. And they're to his, uh, to his disciples in what you know we call the sermon 
on the mount. And we call this the Lord's Prayer when actually it's more the disciples' prayer. And in this um, scripture, in this word, it is Jesus says this in a very expectant way. And as I said before, nothing better could have happened. I hate that you fell, but for us to just stop and pray. Because we are believers in Christ and we follow him, it should be expected that we pray. That's pretty simple, and it should be expected. I expect if you say that you are a true believer in the Lord, and I see you here every week, and we see the fruit of the Spirit, I expect that you pray. You should expect that of me, that we are people of prayer. Jesus expected it, and he commanded them to pray, because he says, when you pray. You ever had somebody come up to you and say, Brother Jimmy, when you pray, when you pray, Remember me. When you, when you pray, that says there's an expectancy there and there's a faith there that, that you pray. So we should be a people of prayer. So let's look real quick. I want to move through this quickly. I know we've got food and fellowship to do when this is over, but we got to get the word of the Lord, the bread of life. Amen? So let's first look at where it says we're going to talk about a set place. The word of God again says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. The text uses the word closet here, and the definition, and if you hear me very much, you know that I sit down with my Bible, my notepad, and my dictionary, because I love to do word studies, because we miss a lot of things if we don't take the time to study, but closet simply means a small, private room. So there needs to be a set place for us to pray. Now, that doesn't have to be an actual closet, if your closet is like mine. Come on, women. If your closet's like mine, you know, that is not the place to go and pray. There is no way I can find a place to pray in my closet because Alan's got so many clothes and shoes. <laughs> I'm just saying if you're listening. It doesn't have to be a set closet, but it does need, and it doesn't have to be the same place every time. But it does need to be a set place, set apart, in other words. It needs to be set apart. You need to have a place that you know when you go there, you're praying. Or that your family, when they see you go into that room or that spot, that place, they know mom's praying. They know that's where dad goes to pray. I know I grew up hearing a lot of preachers that talked about their altar that they made. It might be out in the woods. It might be, and men and women are different. It don't have to be necessarily an actual closet. If it is, that's great. That's fine. But it does need to be a place set apart. The Word of God says that he called us to be a separate people. We are to be a separate people, peculiar people. So why in the world would our prayer life not need to be set apart we need a set place the word of God in Luke there's several verses in Luke that Jesus was our ultimate example of a prayer life Luke 5 and 16 says he withdrew himself into the wilderness he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed Luke 22 and 41 says and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast. This was at the Mount of Olives. He withdrew from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed. You with me tonight? And Luke 6 and 12 says, and it came to pass in those days that he, still talking about Jesus, went into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer. So I challenge you tonight to think, do you have a closet of prayer? Do you have that set time, that set apart place That's just you and the Lord. That is set apart. In my life, I have had plenty of different prayer, what I call my prayer places or my prayer closets. I've had a place in my bedroom in the floor in my my first home that I had. It was in the floor by my bed. And let me tell you, I would go in there. My son knew when I went in there, that's where mom was going to pray. As a matter of fact, one of the best compliments he could have given me was, I think it was last night, he called and Alan answered the phone and he said I just want to tell you thank you for letting me come over and we had a Bible study and then later he called again and I said I'm sorry Mr. Call son he said mom I just figured that if Alan answered the phone you was praying getting ready for Sunday that's the best compliment he could have given me I mean 
that was the best compliment my child could have given me to say, Mom, I just assumed that because you didn't answer your phone that you were praying because that's set apart. I've had plenty of places that I have prayed that had been that special place. And I'm telling you, I have made my mark on the carpet with my makeup many times. Every house I've ever lived in, there's a place in the floor that's got this kind of if it's carpet, it's kind of greasy, kind of got my mascara, Jessica, you know, it's just got all that, you know, because I don't cry pretty, and I don't pray pretty usually, but that's just me and the Lord, but that's a set place, and I don't apologize for it, I don't try to clean it up, I don't try to make it look pretty when company comes over, because I've got a prayer room in my house now, in our new house, it's the prayer tower, it's upstairs in a bonus room, and I'm telling you, that's the place, I don't try to clean it, I don't try to vacuum it, that's where I pray, and if you come to my house and I show you around and you see that place, I'm not going to apologize for that dirty spot in the floor, because that's my set-apart place, that's my closet. A prayer. So I challenge you, if you're a new convert, maybe you're just getting into the practice of praying, to find you a closet of prayer. There is nothing, nothing like the closet of prayer. Nothing like it. We're going to look at the shut place. The word of God says, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door. That's about the best part of that scripture, if you ask me. Shut the door. We need a shut place that we can have with just us and the Lord where there is no interruptions. We go to that set place because that's our place. It's not your place. Your place is not their place, but that's my place to set apart, and I shut the door. The Word of God or the Scripture says, and when you have shut the door, shut means to close out any interruptions. We don't need interruptions. This world today is full of so many distractions, especially with our social media we talked about. Every time you turn around, we can be interrupted by the phone. We can be interrupted by that little thing on Facebook. We can be interrupted by somebody at the door. We can be interrupted with me getting ready for this. I was interrupted with my back giving me a fit. I was interrupted with two or three different physical issues going on. It never failed. I'd sit down and try to study or go to pray, and I was interrupted. But I'm telling you, sometimes we've got, not just sometimes, every time, we got to go to that set place. We got to shut the door to all the noise. We got to shut the door to all that fear that's behind us. We got to shut the door to all that's going on. We got to get alone with just us and the Lord. There is a set place, and it should be a shut place. That's just you and the Lord. Again, in Luke chapter 5 and verse 16, it says, And he withdrew himself. It says, And he was withdrawn, and it came to pass in those days when he went out. We have to get alone with God. There are things that nobody needs to hear but God. There's things God needs to hear that nobody else needs to hear. Not even I'm going to challenge you to say not even your spouse. Now, that don't mean keep secrets from your spouse. I don't mean that. But you can say it to God in a way that you can't say it to your spouse. You can say things to God that you can't tell your best friend. You can say things to God. That's where, that's where we should be able to shut out everything and just talk to God. You need to be alone in that shut place because guess what? Nobody can do your praying for you. No, this man right here, he prays for us. Yes, he does, but he can't do my praying for me. This man can't do my praying for me. I can't do his praying for him. I'm telling you, there is nothing like getting alone with the Lord. There is nothing like going to that secret place, that shut place, that set-apart place, and talking to the Lord. In Psalms, it says, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. You hear what the psalmist is saying? He's saying, My cry came to the Lord. I cried from my voice to my God, and his ear heard me. I did my crying. I did my supplication before the Lord, and he heard me. No one can do your praying for you. There is something about that place. It's sort of like when Alan and I, right after the tornado, we stayed with his mom, and at that time Robert was still alive. We stayed with them for about 
three, four weeks, I think, until we could find a temporary house. And it was, I was so thankful to have that place, and this is not anything, um, you know, nothing, no disrespect to them or whatever. It's just there were so many things that were taken in that. And one, two of those things, one of them was my, my prayer place that I normally went to, and and it was so strange for me to try to find that place in somebody else's house. You know, we had very small um, amount of space in the bedroom that we were staying in, and thank God we had that. Thank God we had family that we could stay with, but it, it, it was just different. That place that I had always been going to was was gone and that was the same way it was several years ago in the other house that when the tornado took it that that prayer that set place was gone and the other thing was our privacy as far as there were tons of decisions every day that we had to make there were things we had to talk about our financial stuff our decisions we had to make with insurance all that kind of stuff and we just didn't have that privacy and I longed for <laughs> for us to just get in the car and be by ourselves, you know, to where I could say, okay, these are all the questions I had, and we got to go over this, and we got to, you know, it wasn't that I was trying to be secretive from, from his mom and stepdad, that wasn't it, it's just those are things that we need to talk about, that no, that we just needed that time together, we needed that space somewhere that we could just sit down, put it all out here, you know, and just talk about it, and I realized in the car one day that I was missing that with the Lord as much as I was in it. I was missing that time because when you don't get alone with the Lord and you don't seek his face and you don't get in that shut place, that secret place with him, you begin to miss it. At least I do. I do. Because there's so much that takes place in that secret place. The word of God says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We live in a society today the Lord brought this to my mind. We live in a society today that, if you think about it, there are so many words that are put together because we just don't have time to say both of them. You know, isn't that crazy? We do. I mean, there are words that are built today. It's a little bit of this word and a little bit of that word, and it's just put together. And there's stuff that cram, it's just crammed together, and it, you know, we get it when we hear it, kind of like the word bromance. You know what I'm talking about when I say bromance? Y'all with me? You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, this really close relationship between, you know, a couple of men, maybe a couple of brothers in the Lord or whatever, and we just kid them and call it bromance. Well, I'm going to challenge your thinking a little bit here. We, and you may have this in your house, and if you are, I'm not, I'm not judging at you. But we get caught up on that phrase, prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. And I believe sometimes we miss a lot in between there. Does it really, does prayer actually change things? Well, I don't know. Let's look at the, what the Word of God says when Elijah went before the prophets of Baal and they went up against each other. Those prophets were praying. They were praying to what they thought was a powerful God that was going to answer them. So their prayer, did it do them any good? They, were, they weren't praying to, to a living God. Elijah prayed to the living God, and his prayer actually was very simple. It was just very simple. He recognized, I'm just your servant. Lord, you are God. Let you be God. Let me be your servant, and let you be God. And look what happened. It was the God he served that changed that matter. So in James 5 and 16, it says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Charles Spurgeon once said, again, I'm quoting him, Prayer is the slender nerve that moves the muscles of omnipotence. In other words, the effectual fervent prayer of righteous people availeth much. You we see on social media all the time, oh, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. And there's some of those comments that I see, and I'm like, you're wasting your time because I know what kind of life you live. I know that sounds harsh. I know it sounds harsh, but God's not, God doesn't honor the prayers of unrighteous people. The Word of God says that he honors the prayers of a, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. So let me share this with you real quick. Listen to this. Again, I sit down with the dictionary, and I sit down with that verse, and I took the definition of all of those words, and when you put it together in a, in a sentence, and I'm not taking away from the Word of God. Please don't think I am. But I sat down with the definition of what we have in our vocabulary and listened to what it actually means. The effectual or unceasing, fervent, passionate 
expression or prayer of a devout let's get my glasses on let me start this over the effectual unceasing fervent passionate burning of emotion in an expression or prayer of a devout petition addressed to a living God by a person or a righteous man who meets the standards of what God declares as right and just produces effectual and expected and operative desired effect to be of use or availeth or an advantage in a great amount or large quantity or degree or of a remarkable importance. In other words, passionate prayers with righteous living touches God and he does the work. Amen. He does the work. Yes, we should have confidence in people's prayers, but it's him that does the work. We're going to look at secluded place. I'm going to move right on. We're going to look at the secluded place. Secluded means apart from others or a place where no one can find you or a secret place. Now, there's a time to pray with others. There's a time of corporate prayer. There's a time of prayer meetings. There's a time to pray in groups in various situations and circumstances. But we must have that time alone in prayer. Psalm 91 and 1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place in the secret place that secluded of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty can i tell you in all those years of spending time and, and even today in those prayer closets of mine those set apart places those shut places can i tell you honestly there's not really anything very alluring and very pretty about the secret place secret place sometimes can be ugly sometimes it can be lonely sometimes it can be dark but I guarantee you the God of heaven the God of heaven meets us there amen he meets us there in a way that nobody else can minister to us he meets us there and he hears our cries he hears our voice he hears us and sometimes when I go to that secret place and I'm alone with him sometimes I just lay there on my face before the Lord and just kind of listen to him sometimes and I just hear myself cry out and I might not even be making a sound I might just be laying there groaning and just laying there weeping before him but I know he hears me I know he hears me the Word of God says in being in agony talking about Jesus again he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground and when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples he found them sleeping for sorrow others can only go with you so far just like the disciples only went with Jesus so far but he cried out in agony and if Jesus had to pray to the father if Jesus had to find that secluded place that secret place that shut place then how much more do we in today's world in today's world how much more important it is that we find that time with him that we find that place and we get alone with him and I know that the can be crazy I know that life can be hectic I know that but I'm here to tell you when we put that in its priority when we make that a priority of our day that's where we find that strength to face the battle that's where we find that peace that passes all understanding that's where we find that joy that nothing else compares to that the joy of the Lord is our strength that's where we find wisdom that can only come from God that's where we find those things that he pours into us that can only only come from him amen I've got a prayer calendar at home that I look to every day I've had it for I know 20 something years and I love it because it is just that it's a prayer calendar now I'm gonna tell you there's no quick easy fix to prayer there's no simple formula there's no magic pill there's no simple um, repetition that this is there's nothing that anybody's gonna come out with that makes prayer simple does that make sense I mean, you remember years ago the whole Jabez prayer thing anybody remember that okay well 
and no offense to anybody that may have prayed it, but, you know, it got to be, it was such a thing of, oh, if you, and I've literally had several people tell me, if you pray this right here, this, this prayer right here for 30 days, if you pray that for 30 days, I'm telling you, I mean it, if you pray it for 30 days, you're going to see a difference, you're going to see a difference, you're going to see a difference. Well, we should pray the Word of God, but there's no quick formula. There's no easy, there's no fast fix for prayer. You've just got to get alone with the Lord. you just got to get alone with Him, and in that prayer calendar that I have, I love to go to it every day. For one thing, it's every day of the year it has a scripture about prayer. Not just for a certain month and not just for, you know, a certain time of year. Every day it's about prayer. And then it has a little quote from somebody. And I love to go to that every morning when I get up and go in the living room, turn the light on. It's right there and I like to read it. But that's not my praying. Does that... Or you understand that does not fix it for me that helps set me in the right mind and a lot of times those scriptures will be confirmation to something I'm going through or maybe a message I'm studying for or whatever those though that prayer calendar helps set my tone helps helps speak to my heart but that doesn't do my praying for me that doesn't that doesn't get it but I do want to quote a couple of things and see how timely they are for today's world that came from my prayer calendar one says, the boldness to enter into the holiest is not a conscience feeling of confidence. The measure of our boldness is the worth God attaches to the blood of Jesus. It's God's worth that he attaches to the blood of Jesus. which goes right along with what I just said about James 5 and 16. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much because our righteousness is actually he clothes us in his righteousness. And it's that nerve, it's that nerve in that quote I was talking about that, that it touches that nerve of omnipotence and he responds. He comes on the scene and he does the work. Another quote I thought was interesting is, the one concern of the devil is to keep Christians from praying. He fears nothing from prayerless studies. He fears nothing from prayerless work prayerless religion he laughs at our toil and our hard work he mocks our wisdom but he trembles when we pray amen so you may be here today thinking well i'm just kind of new or i've been here for a long time and i really don't know what to do i don't know how to contribute to the church you can pray amen that's the main thing we need is pray if anybody comes to your mind especially if it's me and alan during the week pray for us We've got much to pray about. We have much to seek God about. We have much that we need to seek the Lord about and be in prayer about. And another quote I want to share says, I have been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and that of all about me seemed insufficient for the day when everyone seemed panic-stricken I went to my room and got down on my knees before Almighty God and prayed. And soon a sweet comfort crept into my soul that Almighty God, Almighty God had taken the whole business into his own hands. Do you know who that quote was by? President Abraham Lincoln during the time of our country's civil war. Does that not sound like a prayer that we need to be praying today? Father, I have nowhere else to go. Are you here tonight and maybe you have felt like that? I have nowhere else to go. It's all chaos around me. My house is divided or our country is divided or maybe even, God forbid, our church is divided, our community is divided, or this relationship is divided or whatever. It's divided. I have nowhere else to go, but I steal away to that place. I steal away to that secret place, that secluded place, and there God Almighty takes it in his hands. Hallelujah. In conclusion, we've looked at a set place, a shut place, and a secluded place. The word of God says, And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. He's a God of rewards. He is a God of rewarding us. Amen? And Hebrews 11 and 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. You gotta believe that he is first. You have to believe that he is, and we serve the living God. And
and that he is a what rewarder of them that diligently seek him amen he is a rewarding god there is a reward for getting in that closet there is a reward for shutting everybody out there is a reward for being secluded and drawing away and getting alone with the lord because revelation 22 and 12 says and behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his works shall be there is a reward for getting alone with the lord amen you may feel like i've been praying and i don't see anything i'm not seeing any results I'm not seeing any wheels turning. I'm not seeing any evidence that God's even hearing me. Well, can I tell you that there are rewards that you may not see? You may not see them. God may answer those prayers long after we're gone. I, I'm telling you, I know for a fact, my family is a, is a perfect example of that. We were raised in a Christian home. All seven of us kids were taken to church. We had all served the Lord at one time. And I had brothers that went out and into the world. I had sisters that went out into the world and just served the devil. And I'm telling you what, they served him good. They just, they lived sinful, hard lives. And both of my parents died with some of them not, with them not seeing all of them come back to the Lord. But I'm a firm believer that their prayers have no expiration dates. <laughs> Amen. Just because they died doesn't mean their prayers died with them. Amen. Because I'm a walking example of that. Every day that my mother and daddy pled the blood of Jesus over me or they claim things on me by the word of God, I'm a walking example. That's still going on in my life. Amen. And I'm here to tell you they died in the faith as the word says some will die in the faith having yet not seen that promise but i'm here to proclaim the goodness of the lord my brothers are all back serving the lord they are in church they are serving the lord one of them died recently but he gave his heart to the lord my mother and daddy didn't see that they didn't see all of them they saw one or two but they didn't see all of that but that didn't mean that their prayers expired when they did. Amen. They didn't expire. Their prayers didn't expire when we put them in the ground. Their prayers didn't expire once their bodies got cold. Those prayers continued. The Lord heard and answered. And there may be some things that you feel like you're not seeing any answers. Don't be discouraged by that. Don't be discouraged. We must have faith, as the word says, that we have to believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Because the ultimate award, reward is what we just talked about, that he's coming quickly. He is coming quickly, and he's bringing his reward with him. And when we get there, <laughs> when we get over there, it's going to make all those times in the secret place worth it. It's going to make all those times of having to get away. It's going to make all those times of having to be, having to make a sacrifice to get alone with the Lord. It's going to make it all worth it because he's got his reward with him. He is a rewarding God, and we're going to see him face to face. And we're going to see how all of these prayers that maybe we didn't see entered on earth. Maybe it's this person that you don't even have contact with anymore, but they cross your mind occasionally. I have those people. I have people that I've not seen since they were kids. But I know what kind of situation they were in the last time I seen them. And Brother Gann, sometimes I pray for them. When they cross my mind, I pray for them. I may not see them until I get to heaven, but I'm trusting that God, who is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, that I'm going to see answers to those prayers. Amen. I want us to stand, Brother Danny, if you've got a CD or anything you could put in, this would be good. If not, that's fine. But if not, maybe I'll just move to the piano. I don't know. But I just think it would be a good idea to do exactly what we've talked about here, and let's just pray. We're, we're people of prayer. Amen. <laughs> we're supposed to be people of prayer. I want to share with you just one thing as you, as you stand and, and we get ready to close out. I talked about a, the secret place. He who, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. A shadow don't sound like much, does it? It doesn't sound like much of a barrier. It doesn't sound like much of a shield. It doesn't sound like much of something that you can hide behind. But let me tell you, when the Almighty, when it's the Almighty shadow, that's all you need. 
that is plenty. That is enough. His shadow is enough. We don't need a wall. We don't need any kind of bunker. We have got his shadow, and that is enough. I read a, um, read a story just this week about a soldier. You may have heard this story before. I'll share it real quick. In World War II, who was separated from his unit on the island of Okinawa, under, they had come under heavy, intense fighting by the Japanese soldiers. And he was alone in the hills, and he was in dangerous enemy territory, and he was looking for a place to hide. And he ended up hiding out in a cave. There were several caves in the area. And he got in the cave, and he began to hear the Japanese soldiers coming his way, and he knew they were looking for him. They knew that he was in the area, and they began searching the caves and looking for him. And he was a Christian, so he prayed to God, and he says, Lord, if it be your will, please protect me. Whatever your will, though, I love you and trust you. Amen. And as he prayed, he caught sight of a spider. He started building a web over the entrance of that cave. And just in his scoffing, he said, Ha! God, what I need is a brick wall, and what the Lord sent me is a spider web. And he said, well, I guess the Lord isn't going to help me out of this one. So he remained extremely still and quiet, trying to evade their capture. But as they got closer and closer, he realized that he was about to make his last stand. So he was preparing himself for his last stand. And then he realized what had happened and rejoiced with glee that the spider web was a sign to the enemy soldiers that nobody had just went in that cave because there's a spider web covering it. And if somebody had a duck in that, in that cave, their body would have broken the spider web and it wouldn't be there anymore. So they didn't even search that cave because it was just a spider web. And he's inside thinking, Lord, I need a brick wall and all you give me is a spider web. Let me tell you, when we spend time in the secret place of the Most High, His shadow, amen, His shadow that covers us is enough. We don't need anything else but His shadow. I just want to invite you, and you can turn that up quite a bit if you want to, Brother Gann. I just want to invite us to pray. Whatever you want to pray about, whether it's lost loved ones, that should be our top priority. But whatever you want to pray about, and I want to do something. I didn't ask Brother Gann about this, but I'm sure he'd be okay with that. Let's use these altars. Amen. I am thankful that we have altars. Let's use these altars. Use these chairs if you want to bend it, nail down at those chairs. But we just need to, to pray. Don't worry about what the person next to you is saying. Don't worry about how you sound. You don't have to pray out loud and, and try to pray King James Version. We just need to pray. We just need to pray. If nothing else, we need to pray for what's going in the world going on in the world today with this thing with Ukraine and Russia and and even in our own country and just across the world, we just need to pray because we are a people that should be of prayer. Jesus expects it. He commands it. And he was our ultimate example of prayer. So let's just come to the altars and pray. And I'm going to ask Alan, we may, we may minister to some of you all and, and go around and, and pray for you as you pray, but we just need to pray. And trust the Lord. Come to him believing. That's what his word says. Those who come to him must come must believe that he is and that he is a a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So can we just spend time around the altar tonight or maybe make an altar where you are and just seek God and pray? Amen. Can we just do that? Join us in the altar.